All right, Team Geo. We're moving on um, from Alfred Wagner, the you know Indiana Jones of geology, onto the way the Earth's built, and that's where we're at today. Now, if you're ever, as Stephen Jay Gould tells us down here, if, if you're ever planning on being a geologist, it is. It's one of those sciences where you're outdoors, and it's, it's a good life, it's good fun. Uh, so let's get into it. Now, first, we're going to talk, one thing that you may not be aware of is that the Earth is a dynamic place. It's it's not stable, it's not static. It just it moves over a much, much, much longer time scale than we do. So it goes thousands and millions of years as opposed to the tens of years that we live. All right, so it's a dynamic Earth, not a static Earth. Uh, very quickly while we're at it, we have, so the area is just a quick revision, crust, mantle, um, so you've got the upper mantle, lower mantle, um, the core has two components, the outer core and the inner core, again, so we go solid, solidish, very soft, solid, liquid, and solid, hard inner core, alright, let's load up our pen, and away we go. So, the geothermal gradient. Now, we've talked about this, and what this really means is, well, geo-earth thermal temperature, or heat. Um, so, as we basically, as we descend down through the earth, um, as we decrease in depth, sorry, as we increase depth, pressure and temperature also increase. So, yeah, that's where we're at. And it affects the states of rocks as we descend, and we talked about that. Um, so, basically, as particles the pressure increases, the particles get pushed together and they become more solid. So even though the temperature is increasing, which makes it want to melt, um, and it's very hot in the inner core and that's why it's it's all melty, molten, by the time you get to the, sorry, the outer core, by the time you get to the inner core though, the pressure is so, so intense that they're all pushed together and it's it's a solid. Um, so it's the inner core is a solid even though it's the hottest. And yeah, this is where we're at. So if we're back here, here's a bit more detailed picture. Again, not to scale, important to know. We'll come back to this in a minute. So here's the temperatures and the depths. Alrighty, so the crust. This is the terrestrial area, this the outermost layer. We live on this. Terrestrial means Earth, by the way. Um, it, it's rocky and solid, so it's a solid layer. Uh, basically, there's two types and they vary in thickness. So you've got oceanic crust, which is down here, and that's the thinnest and most dense. Um, I don't write that down there, but I don't say that, but you need to know that. It's the most dense and it's the thickest. It's about eight kilometers thick on average. And then you've got the continental crust, which is about 40 kilometers thick on average and less dense. Okay, so 99% of it is just eight elements and we'll go into what they are in class. Or you can look them up. Um, and it floats on the mantle and moves around due to convection currents, which we, you know, we showed with the experiment in class. So, the lithosphere, what is that? It's, it's the rocky sphere, it's Greek for rocky sphere, and basically it's this area here, so you've got the upper end of the mantle and the crust, and it's it, it's roughly 100 kilometers deep and it varies a little bit, but yeah, so that's the solid area, and it's the outermost shell, again, so you've got the crust and that so two separate types of organization here. So crust, mantle, blah, 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 and lithosphere and a sphenosphere and so forth all the way down. We only really worry about the lithosphere and a sphenosphere, which we'll get to. Okay, so outermost shell, cool. Um, behaves elastically, so it moves around and, and stretches. Very long time, it's thousands or millions of years. Okay, so the mantle. It's this area in the middle there, and what the key word is plastic. Um, so it's the layer below the crust and we don't, we've never seen it. It's all from secondary or indirect observations that we take our data here. Uh, now it's about 2,900 kilometers thick. It varies in certain parts. Not by much though. And it's divided into the upper and lower mantle. Okay. So the rock makeup of the mantle is soft, not molten. Um, at the top it's the hardest, so the upper layer, upper mantle is the hardest and it's the softest in the lower mantle and it's plastic and that means it bends and stretches. Okay, so the asthenosphere, now it's just the, oh, it means weak, weak sphere, um, it's solid, there are some molten, molten bits like underneath the mid-oceanic ridges and that's where the lava comes up. Um, poorly defined boundaries but it tends to be 
mm, between two and seven hundred kilometers thick or below the surface. Um, it's ductile, which means it can be stretched and mechanically weak. So it will, it can be stretched according to what the layers inside of it are doing. Um, and it's at the top of the upper mantle. All right. So if you want some extension, this has been a fairly short one today. It's mostly revision. So if you want some extension, extension, go to page 274 of your textbook. It's the iScience 9 textbook, and draw the diagram showing the discontinuities with a brief description of what they are, and just add that to the end if you want the extension. Um, and I'll see you in class. Don't forget, bring an apple.